All right guys, so in today's video, we're covering the wiring side of my ABF project. You're new to the channel, it was a 1.3, and the reason why I'm calling it Project Freebie, because it was given to me, it's basically a five door, royal blue metallic. It's a 1991, so it's the last in line. It's what we call a special here in Portugal, simply because it has a different kind of pattern on the seats, ref counter, central locking. I've had the bay done, all painted up. That's in an early video. And I've had it in the same original color, which is LA5U. All I've done is I've actually put a little, one of the variants, which has a bit of red tinge to it. So that's what I've used, and that's what I will get the rest of the car done. But in today's video, like I said at the beginning, we'll be covering the wiring side and the ECU of this project. This ECU, even though it looks standard, it's actually a mega square inside here. It was done by a company, I found this company online, they're called K-Data, and they're a German company. They also do on their website, I think for the VR, eight valves, Mark IIs, ABFs, 20 valves, and I think they do hollow BMWs as well, plug and play looms, which is quite good. So they've actually gutted out the case and got printed board in here with all the components. It also does wide band, and if you have a little bits and pieces, it's quite a nice trick ECU and definitely worth the value for money that this is. I think it's 499 euros, 499 euros, which I think is a really good deal with the lead for the wide band as well. So it's got wide band control in it, everything. All you need to do is literally just buy the sensor itself. You don't need any other controller, which makes life really, really easy. But before we get into this, there is a few other little bits I need to do, which is gonna be the 16 valve heat shield that goes at the back. Luckily, I sourced one. We've also these quite rare clips that clip on. We're going to do the air box and show you guys the air box. Uh, also, have to put, put the sensor in. And that's it. And also, actually, need to extend wiring wise the plug for the air temp sensor, which kind of ended there. So, it's just to extend it. I'm going to make a little plug and play loom. So, it goes on to there. And that's what we're covering in today's video. It's going to be a long video, lots of detail. So stay to the end so you guys can actually see what's all involved. Wiring, maybe a few diagrams I'll put up as well. It's a whole works, the whole shebang. All right, so let's start with the simple things and get them out of the way first, which is do the heat shield and do the airbox. Okay, so that's a nice fit. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys what I've actually done with the airbox. Now this is a 1.6 Mark II Golf GTD, like a later spec airbox, which has kind of got the lines on it, because the early ones are actually smaller, which are actually perfect if you're doing an ABF or something like that in a Mark I. They've got the skinny type airbox. These have the kind of more, kind of squarer ones, they're not so thin. So this is the top part of the GTD. It doesn't have a velocity stack. I mean, I would like to maybe modify this airbox at one point. Also, I'm actually gonna do a few tests. There is gonna be kind of development on this car where on the rolling road, they're gonna try different airboxes and air filters maybe. And this is the bottom half of the GTD. Now you can actually slide this bit out, this snorkel bit here. But what I'm gonna do is, cause I actually have the headlight slider bit that goes in. Just to keep it OEM looking, I've actually got an option for this. Now, I do have this one that I've got actually off a Mark III airbox. Machine this out, kind of get it sitting in the same kind of location, and it's larger, so it's gonna flow a little bit, where well, it's gonna flow a lot better air because it doesn't, you know, come down to such a small size. So I could do something like that, but also there is an alternative. Now, nowadays, unfortunately, it's an expensive alternative because and here you have it. This is the more expensive option nowadays because anything that's got G6 in it has got G60 tax and these are really expensive now, the airboxes. I've seen them for some crazy prices on eBay, 200 plus. Luckily I had this one on the shelf for one day dreaming of doing a, a G60 project. It still may happen, but anyway. G61 is a lot larger than the GTD one. You could also actually slide in a standard KR one which is kind of in between these. So if you do actually, do, you're doing an ABF, you can get hold of a bottom half of a KR airbox, like a 90 spec car. You can slide this out and slide in the KR one because it is larger than this TDI one. 
But the biggest of the bunch, it seems, is actually the G60 one, because obviously it produces 160 PS out of the box. And these boxes can easily flow up to about 190 in just a chipped G60. If anything, they can go over, over that with just a standard airbox. So I know this airbox here, this bottom half anyway, is gonna be good enough for this engine. So that really does look OEM plus. I do really like the look of that. That looks really, really cool. Now, if I had to jam the air temp sensor into here, it is getting a little bit of flow, but it's not in the main uh, kind of flow, which is important actually. I know my, fr my good friend Tim now is probably rolling his eyes as he watches this because he says that this needs to be, and he's right, needs to be in the inlet manifolds. But on the standard ABF, it actually sits here on the airbox. So I'm not gonna cut and extend that loom because it's actually around there. I'm actually gonna put this little adapter for now. And then at a later stage, I will get myself a 20 valve, 180, 20 valve turbo air temp sensor. It's quite nice. All you need to do literally is drill a hole, tap another hole, and it literally plugs in. It's the same resistance, I think, more or less. And I can just plug it in here into the inlet manifold. So that'll be apparently a lot more accurate. And my good friend Tim will be happier with that. But for now, to get us going, I'm going to maybe push this in a little bit further so it actually catches a bit more airflow. And I've made this little extension that literally just clips in from there and goes into, into where the plug is. So next thing on the hit list, before we move on to the wiring for the ECU, is actually screening the Lambda sensor. All I need to do is actually drill a hole in the little heat shield so it actually clears. Because Okay, so note to self, I should have actually planned and done this sooner. It was actually a real pain to actually get this lambda sensor in and run the wire to the front. Here it is there. Right guys, so now that we've got all those little bits out of the way, the Lambda sensor and actually fuel, which is the most important thing in the car to run, we do need petrol. Uh, as you can see, I've got the ECU on here, paperwork out, my voltmeter out. We're gonna run this wire, loom through the bulkhead, and then run through a whole load of tests before I plug this in to make sure I don't blow anything up. Wow, this is really quite difficult. I should have maybe have had the, again, I should have run this before, before I actually ran the, the brake lines and stuff. Yeah, because I've hidden it so well, it's literally here in the corner. So hopefully you can see it, the plug's right there, and it sits really neatly and it runs along, and then under the servo. And this is the mess of wires that I've got inside here. Now, as I showed you guys in the earlier videos, it's worth watching if you haven't seen them. I've uh, put these two plugs into the fuse box, which are the ones that go to the ECU and from the ECU to the fuse box. And I've got the coincided, that's what I've done here. So it's literally plug and play. This makes my life a lot easier. But again, before I do this, actually first thing I'm gonna do is, I put the fuel pump relay in. So now what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna double check which wire it is on this wires here. And I'm actually gonna put an earth to it, turn the ignition on and make sure the fuel pump actually primes and comes on first. So now what I'm going to use is a power probe. You can actually send one you can read if it's Earth or plus, as well as you can actually send power or you can send an Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ignition on. And it's this yellow and blue wire. And that should read 12, which it does. Now if I send a negative pulse, the fuel pump should come on. Okay, so that works perfectly. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is get plug these in. I think this is the main earth for the ECU and this is the main power to the ECU. Now, this earth doesn't actually go to the battery. It does in a way, this is the one that goes to that little block 
that's on the engine block, like the adapter of all the earths. It goes to actually earth strap that goes to the gearbox that goes straight onto the battery, so that's a really good earth. And that seems to be kind of a real bonus on this eight valve loom over the standard ABF one. It doesn't seem to have that kind of connector on it, but I'm sure you can adapt it, it's quite easy. So now, if I test this, I should have earth, which I do, and that should have 12, which I do. But I'm still gonna get the voltmeter to make sure they actually are a good 12 and a good earth and actually measure what this is. The battery is at 12.4, so let me just double check what I'm getting here. And actually, yeah, with the ignition on, there's obviously a bit of a draw on the battery, and it is 12.2, which is what I'm getting there at the ECU, so that's perfect. Okay, so this is the nerve-wracking bit, which is plugging it in. But before we get into that, I'm gonna disconnect a few plugs on the engine. Okay, so to make sure I'm not gonna have any issues with this ECU, the cold plug is disconnected. I'm going to also do the hall sensor, the disconnect that, the throttle position sensor, disconnect that, and the injector loom, also disconnect that, because the reason why we're going to do that is, before we plug the UC ECU in, make sure none of this stuff is actually shorting out and then damages the ECU. So the first thing we're going to do is going to be checking the injectors. We should have 12 here and these shouldn't be earth, should have a small resistance in them. So with the power probe, yep, we have 12. Double check that it is 12 volts full. We're gonna run the same test, gonna earth it out on the battery. So earth on the battery with the voltmeter. Put that in there, hopefully I'm not covering yet. We've got 12.2. That's perfect, so no, no voltage drop there. So now we're gonna move over to the crank or the speed sensor. Uh, this is a hall sensor and it's set up for a hall sensor as an ABF plug and play loom. It's not gonna be a VR, so we'll get a voltage. So we should have between one and three, we should have five volts across here. Okay, Let's see if I can balance this on there. <laughs> and not get in the way of the camera. Volts. That's perfect. So we can plug that in as well now. So now we're going to move over to the coil and double check what that's doing. Now the coil should be 12 volts and it should be across one and three as well. There you go. Again, very little drop, if any. That's cool. So that's perfect. So we can actually plug the coil in now. And last, but by no means least, it's the throttle position sensor, otherwise known as a TPS. Again, between across one and three, it should be five volts. Hopefully 4.9, like the crank one was, the speed sensor one was. There we go, perfect. And we can plug that in. Okay, let's do this, the sniff test. Yep, it doesn't smell of anything burnt, so that's fine. Let's turn the ignition off, and there's only two more things we need to do before we get this start, before we can get this started. And one of those things is, uh, is actually removing the fuel pump relay. The second thing is actually wiring up this oil pressure gauge, or if you've got a mechanical one, plumber mechanical one in, but that can be quite messy. I actually have a VDO one, which I'm just going to wire it in. I will actually try and get this in the dashboard somewhere at some point. So it looks proper OEM plus, but at the moment I've got this out here. We're going to wire this in now. So make sure we're going to crank it over, build up oil pressure in the engine. Once that so we're almost there. Cranked it up, got some pressure in it. Now the ECU's here. We have to open up the ECU so that I can fit one, the comms cable, which connects inside. So I can plug the laptop in and that'll probably stay in as well. And then also here, I've also got a plug inside the ECU, the actual uh, wideband lead as well that needs to go inside. So that's the next thing we're gonna do.
straight off the bat, that doesn't actually fit through there. So I'm going to have to make this hole slightly larger. So I will, I will actually say it was only slightly, it wasn't too much. So I need to actually take it out so that will fit through. And then hopefully now the communication wire will also fit through the same hole. Because the plug's actually quite large on this as well. Oh, it's a tight squeeze, but yeah, it fit perfect. Now, carefully here, comms wire goes into, into there. And the wide band goes into there. Make sure it clips in. Yep, clipped in. Make sure they're not tangled up inside. And there we have it. Okay, so I didn't show you guys, but I actually connected the laptop in and it was quite apparent straight away that it looks like I'd made a schoolboy error. Uh, the TPS signal wasn't reading, it was reading minus 16, getting an odd reading. And what I had done actually, because I'd modified the loom slightly, going from the crank sensor in the block to the crank sensor or the speed sensor in the, in the distributor, in the four window KR type. So this green and white wire should have gone to the TPS and this red wire should have gone to the distributor and actually had them mixed up the wrong way around. So I wasn't getting an RPM signal and also I wasn't getting and like I said, the TPS, the throttle position sensor, was reading an odd reading. So now I'm just going to swap those rounds and hopefully, and also check the continuity to make sure they're in, those wires are where they're supposed to be. So it's always good to check continuity, one to make sure there's not a break in the wire and there isn't something wrong here with this plug. But so far, it all seems to be working fine. I'm just going to double check to make sure that that white and red wire is the same as this red and white wire here, red and white wire here. It should beep. Which it does, so that's fine. Put that back in. Got all the diagrams out, I've got these, all these old stuff. I've got so much stuff written in this book and plug pinouts of conversions over the years. And so much stuff in here. All right, so let me just solder these wires on. Where, where is it? It's this black, it's this red wire here. And that's it. Okay, so the reading with TPS is better now. Yep, and I'm getting that, so. What I am going to do is quickly I'm going to set the TPS because as you can see it's just slightly above. In case I found it, go into tools and then go into calibrate TPS. And now I'm going to press that to get voltage. And then go full throttle and get voltage. And then accept. And there we go, it's a zero. And now, yeah, full throttle. Perfect, so that's TPS done. Now the moment of truth, I've primed it up. Will it start? I'm getting good old pressure. So one thing I will say is that Tim's also helped me out massively. I'm so happy that this is running. Now I'm not gonna run it for too long, obviously. It's a bit rough, because obviously I've got those cams in there, as well as the map's gonna be totally off for those cams, uh, ignition wise and fuel wise and all the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do um, I've got the bonnet cable to fit coolant lines at the back for the heater, expansion bottle, fit the rad on, do the pipes as well for the radiator, get some fluid in it, plug in the actual, here's the plug for, where's the plug gone? 
but I haven't put it on so it doesn't overheat because it's dry. So I've left that off and put some coolant in it and then finish off this exhaust as well. I need to do also do the back box, which is the hardest bit and get it running and then see and obviously then at that point adjust the mat and get it to run a lot smoother than it is. But that's going to have to be next week. So peace out guys and keep on watching, keep on subscribing, keep on liking and the ABF is running guys. Peace out.